The Sumatran rhinoceros is the smallest of the rhinoceros species in Asia and the world. They are the hairiest of the modern rhinoceroses and the only two-horned species in Asia. They once inhabited many areas of southern and southeast Asia in rainforests, swamps and cloud forests stretching from India to Indonesia. Now only small populations of this threatened species remain on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra, with the latter hosting the greatest number of this rare animal. They are a solitary species except during the breeding season and when rearing a calf. As the smallest rhino, they stand at a metre to a metre and a half at the shoulder. Like that of the African rhinos, their nasal horn is larger than the one behind it, with the longest recorded horn of an individual reaching 81 centimetres. The posterior horn is much smaller, often not growing beyond 10 centimetres. Their horns are dark grey to black in colour. Between males and females, they are not very sexually dimorphic, except for a difference in their horn size and body size. They also resemble the other Asian rhinos too, with folds of skin forming what is sometimes considered like a suit of armour. These folds are used as a form of thermoregulation, increasing surface area for heat loss. They can often be seen wallowing in mud. Like with all rhinos, they have sensitive skin, and so the mud acts as a cooling mechanism for such a large animal, and can also be used as a sunblock to both protect from sunburn and keep their skin moist. Sumatran rhinos are unusual among many rhinos as they possess thick to scarce coverings of hair, and this has led biologists to trace their family relations and have been found to be closely related to a species known as Stephanorhinus, a two-horned rhinoceros from North Africa and Eurasia during the late Pliocene to early Pleistocene eras. Another species the Sumatran rhino is close to is the Celadonta or woolly rhinoceros of northern Eurasia during the Pleistocene and the last ice age. Thousands of years ago, there would have been thousands of these Sumatran rhinos across southern Asia, with a sharp decline in its widespread distribution occurring 25,000 years ago, where the world was in the full grip of the Ice Age still, and there was less suitable habitat for this jungle dweller, pushing it south to where it inhabited what is now countries such as Myanmar, Thailand, India, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia and Vietnam. Today, they are only found largely in Sumatra, with a population in Borneo. The Sumatran rhino has no natural predators, aside from humans of course, who have hunted the animal for its meat and horns in many years. Tigers, leopards or dolls may take a calf, but rather not risk confrontation with an adult. They share their forest with many other species, such as other ungulates, like elephants, tapirs and sarau. But despite this, they do not compete for food, as all have their own specific ecological niches in their ecosystem. Elephants and rhinos are known to share forest trails for better access in the dense jungles, which also create tracks that smaller animals like deer, wild pigs, sarau, and even dolls will follow along. The Ganonglosa National Park, situation in northern Sumatra, is the only place in the world where Sumatran rhinos can be found alongside Sumatran orangutans, Sumatran tigers, and Sumatran Asian elephants, all in the same place. The rhino is a folivore, feeding on young saplings, leaves, twigs and shoots, feeding in twilight hours and in the mornings of the day when it is not too hot or humid to be moving about, otherwise they will wallow in mud pools or sheltered areas of the forest, or alternatively in water sources such as streams and rivers. Their diet lacks much nutrition, so to solve this problem, rhinos like many other jungle animals will visit salt licks to get their healthy dosage of minerals in their diet. The Sumatran rhinoceros is easily the most vocal rhinoceros, making three distinct calls, these being eeps, which are similar to that of a yelp, loud wails that carry across the forest, named so as it is almost song-like, like those made by humpback whales in the ocean, and whistleblows, the loudest of these vocalizations, thought to carry over a similar distance to those made by elephants, which have been heard to carry for almost 10 kilometers. They will also mysteriously twist and shape uneaten saplings as almost being a signal to other rhinos that may follow along the trail to alert them of a potential junction in the jungle. A cow is a term used to describe a female ungulate, and even a cetacean like a whale. The cow Sumatran rhinoceros will become sexually mature at 6 or 7 years of age, while bulls will be mature at 10. The gestation period is between 15 to 16 months at a time, 
in which the mother will give birth to a small, often hairy calf. It relies on the nourishment of its mother's milk until about 15 months when they are weaned. The calf stays with its mother for the first two to three years of juvenile life, then beginning a largely solitary life, wandering the jungles in search of food. The courtship between the bull and the cow is much like that of the African black rhinoceros, using their sensitive snouts in physical contact. But like the black rhinoceros still, young immature bulls can be quite aggressive towards cows, and have been known to injure and even in some cases kill the female. In captive breeding programs, the constricted space may be a contributor to low success in breeding, as the animals cannot escape from potential attackers, and has been a challenge for sustaining a captive insurance population. Species has suffered a dramatic decline over the last few decades, with large percentages of rhino numbers disappearing at a time, leaving only small scattered populations that are at risk of inbreeding, which could spell extinction for the last Sumatran rhinos on Earth. The species has been threatened, like all rhinos, by extensive poaching for their horns, for use in claims medicines like aphrodisiacs or supposed traditional medicines, which have all been tested scientifically to be false and carry no medicinal benefits or properties in the horns, which are made of keratin, the same material that human hair, finger and toenails are made of. So instead of horns, they might as well be using their own nails. And the horns are specially compressed hair, which grows over time to eventually form the rhino horn. But a threat that not only faces Sumatra rhinoceros, but all animals in the jungles of Indonesia and rainforests around the world is the deforestation and destruction of their habitat for logging, human infrastructure and agriculture, particularly for the infamous oil palm plantations that scourge the once rich jungle laden areas of much of Southeast Asia, a monoculture whose biodiversity pales in comparison to that of the true rainforest. Their lifespan of 30 to 45 years in the wild does pose a challenge for their conservation in captivity. All wild rhinos live in reserves, and the most viable individuals being kept in a semi-captive environment in a special breeding facility to successfully breed new Sumatran rhinos to continue the species' survival. But to save a species, you not only have to ensure that it, there is a species to protect, with viable breeding individuals to keep the population going, but also to protect the habitat they have evolved to specialise in existing in. The removal and replanting of old oil palm plantations with native jungle occurs in some parts of Sumatra and other parts of Southeast Asia, with the recovery in fertile areas such as Losa in Sumatra, enriched by volcanic nutrients, can recover within years. The tagging and careful monitoring of Sumatran rhinos is also key to ensuring their survival, and if any new Sumatran rhinos are located in unprotected rainforest, they are rescued and relocated to protected areas, and if they are a young, healthy individual, they are also placed within breeding programs to help conserve the species. Historically, Sumatran rhinos have been kept in the captive environment, though somewhat unsuccessfully, with many dying within a few years. Many now are kept in a semi-captive environment within their native range, where they are monitored by rangers and conservationists regularly to try to preserve the last remaining individuals. However, zoos did not entirely fail at housing the animal, the Cincinnati Zoo in Ohio in the United States successfully bred the species in the early 2000s, with the last three rhinos in the Western Hemisphere, and the zoo welcomed three calves during the breeding program, before the last rhino Harapan was sent back to Indonesia, where he has now recently become a father of a new male calf born at Way Canvas National Park in Sumatra in November of 2023. A major way that the everyday person outside of Indonesia can help Sumatran rhinos is by helping to preserve their habitat. Palm oil is a readily used food product, cosmetic and cleaning liquid ingredient. In fact, over 70% of all packaged products in your local supermarket will contain palm oil. The way to help prevent this could be campaigning to your local government and letting your country hear a voice against palm oil importation letting them know that you and others would like to see tropical rainforests and the species within them alive and thriving in the future. This can help decrease the demands that sustainable palm oil companies would have to meet, therefore declining the amount of palm oil that is necessary to be produced to sustain the products. Alternating the oil might sound like a good idea. However, the products used to create these oils would also increase the problem. 
These alternatives, such as soybeans, sunflower and such, require more land to be cleared to produce similar volumes to the current palm oil being produced. Being palm oil aware comes with knowing if the organisation that you use supports and purchases from certified sustainable palm oil companies. Sustainable palm oil has often been questioned, but the organisation known as RSPO or the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil does not plant on peatland, which is land that requires drainage to be utilised and will release a lot of carbon. And when disrupted, releases many tonnes of the greenhouse gas. Sustainable palm oil avoids these areas as well as areas of high carbon stocks and high conservation and biodiversity value, helping protect rainforests and reduce deforestation significantly, and this reduces the carbon emitted in turn. If you live in Southeast Asia and you might see rhino horn being sold at your local market, report the location, store and items to the local authorities and they will deal with the issue. Donated to conservation organisations such as the WWF, Save the Rhino, Sumatran Rhino Alliance and the International Rhino Foundation can have these funds going towards the preservation of this incredible species. A rare and beautiful species that once roamed Southeast Asia extensively, now only being found in Indonesia with as many as 47 wild individuals with 11 in captivity. The smallest rhinoceros on Earth needs the support of people around the world to remain on this planet for the generations to come. If you love Sumatran rhinos, please donate and support as many of the rhinos organisations as possible, as well as doing the same for many other endangered species that need our help now more than ever. All that were mentioned above, I will link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of this kind of content. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.